So what's going on over here? It's really strange because our quadrat analysis that we performed earlier on the same uh, on the same data showed us that the that that the data was significantly clustered, okay? But the NND analysis shows us that it's significantly uniform. And that's a big problem, and it's one of the major problems with nearest neighbor analysis. It, uh, it, it, it's a very localized form of analysis, because for each point, we're only doing an investigation of the closest, of the nearest neighbor to that point. And in that sense, it kind of ignores a, uh, the existence of global patterns. So, for example, imagine uh, if we had a study area. And in this study area, uh, we had points that were distributed like this. Okay, now you tell me, are these points random, clustered, or uniform? It seems to me that these points are very uniformly distributed. So if we were to do a quadrat analysis like this and place our quadrats over this study area, we would see that, um, that there's zero variance, so VMR equals zero, and in that case, that's going to imply uniformity. So we have a very, very uniform point pattern. But if we were to calculate the nearest neighbor distance statistic on this point pattern, well, we'll be calculating that distance, that distance, that distance, and in fact, all of these nearest neighbor distances are, are really small. Um, and remember that smaller average NND bar. So when NND bar goes down, that's going to imply clustering. So our NND statistic, our nearest neighbor statistic, is going to tell us that this point pattern is clustered, but the more, which is, you know, but the more global perspective, if we zoom out and perform this quadrat analysis, we're actually going to see that the data are, are, are very uniform. And, you know, the takeaway lesson from this is that different statistics operate on different scales. And the quadrat analysis is going to operate on whatever scale we choose for our quadrats. Whatever size quadrats we have, it's going to, the quadrat analysis is going to pertain to understanding the point pattern distribution at that scale of analysis. The nearest neighbor analysis is always going to depend on the scale of just, you know, one observation at a time. It's at the scale and the perspective of, of, a, of these nearest neighbor distances, single distances to the closest nearest neighbor, which is a really, really localized scale of analysis. And therefore, uh, the results, you know, that we get over here can be very, very contradictory. So in fact, you know, no one really uses nearest neighbor the, the simple form of nearest neighbor analysis anymore. Instead, what we do is uh, we don't just consider the distance to the nearest neighbor, but for each point, we, we calculate the distance to the closest k neighbors. So say we set k to 10 or 5 or 20. And for each point, we know the distance to the 20 closest points. And then we use the average of those 20 distances to come up with a new uh, nearest neighbor distance statistic. And that gives us, that allows us to play with the scale of analysis here. So instead of just focusing on one distance for the, say, this is our target point, we find the distance to that point, that point, that point, that point, that point, and these two points. And we use this distribution of distances to to investigate the, the spatial pattern. When we do that, we're using a technique called Ripley's K function. And that's a nearest neighbor approach. Uh, you'll find it in GIS packages like ArcMap. Um, you know, Esri ArcGIS will have a Ripley's K function in it. And 
it's a far more uh, appropriate way to use nearest neighbor distances because it doesn't isolate the scale of investigation to just this very localized single nearest neighbor.